outer case all cleaned up and it's uh, it's looking really good and it doesn't have corrosion or, or problems it looks like it's structurally intact so other than cleaning it up it's uh, it's pretty ready to go all right here we are with that uh, inner case piece which goes right up next to the power section which was heavily corroded as you've seen earlier um, and so what we did here is took and made a mold of this back side which is the shape that we wanted to keep um, and then on the inside uh, did a composite repair and bonded in uh, fiberglass and epoxy resin into this inner case to build it back up. Um, there's a couple other little build up pieces and we figure that most of the corrosion was because of water set in this engine. Uh, here's the water connection point and you can see below the water line here is where almost all the corrosion took place at. So in the repair we went ahead and put a, a petcock here to be able to drain the engine when it's assembled so that the water will not sit in it like it did previously. Um, have a little bit of cleanup work to do on this face um, and then we'll, we'll put a little bit of a, a paint or a a barrier on this back side to protect the fiberglass uh, repair but essentially it's uh, almost back ready to uh, go back onto the engine. Okay here we are repairing a oil uh, squirter or little injector that was meant to cool the piston so these little um, injectors were uh, put in the side of the cylinder wall in the, the main cylinder case and one of them was broken so actually we my dad built two new ones because uh, the other one was, was, one of them was not as good as it should be. So uh, we have to match drill the little guy back together because they had a match drill with a um, set screw running through there to hold them in place. So you can see here there's the little, the little squirter, there's the, the cavity that goes in, and then we've got this drill that we're going to pilot through there to match drill and then tap. Uh, the hole. As you can tell it's hard to get to so we made this special long reamer drill to get there. Okay here we are we're about ready to reassemble the power section so there's all the cylinders ready to go we've got the connecting rods and pistons all um, put in each cylinder and then I'll zoom in you can see there's a little seal in between each cylinder section originally it looked like it was uh, like a molded in uh, piece of rubber. We went ahead and used a 16th o-ring Viton and put it in and then used a little dot of RTV to hold it in place. Um, we got each little squirter, the oil squirters put in and the two replacements that we built that were damaged. And we'll put those cylinders on our little stand. We used a bucket to kind of we'll hold the cylinders as we set it in there and we'll start reassembling. Okay here we got the cylinders back together on the crankshaft. Uh, we got some temporary clamps around the outside and the uh, re there's a retaining ring that holds the individual connecting rods and uh, it's down inside there it's hard to see the little guy. But we got the upper one on and what we figure we're going to do now is put the rear main flange on uh, and everything we're doing right now is loose and uh, as far as the cases and then we'll flip it over and put the other retaining ring on and uh, and then from there we can slowly torque all the bolts um, working from the inside out to get everything lined up and, and snug back to shape. Okay, you got the main power section all back together with the front and rear main uh, flange flanges with holding the uh, main bearings all safety wired and ready to go. Okay, here we are. We've got the uh, engine stand all painted and ready to go. We um, we had to replace the solid aluminum mounts here. We didn't think that was correct for if we were going to try to run this engine. So we replaced what we have here with a uh, industrial rubber uh, isolator mount. So you can see that here. Okay, here we are, back on the stand, ready to reassemble the front half of the engine. <laughs> With this engine, we cataloged and replaced all the seals and gaskets. Um, we found uh, the availability of uh, commercial seals to replace uh, in a lot of places. 
but the gaskets we could not as this is a unique engine so we had uh, pieces laser scanned we could take them into CAD clean them up and then uh, take them back to the gasket maker and they could cut CNC parts for us so there in the black you see the new gaskets being ready to be installed between the inner case and the power section Okay, back here we got the engine on its back again. Thought this would be the best method to drop the outer case. There's the outer case uh, on its back with the, the one uh, gear there. That is the water pump drive gear uh, part of the case. The rest of the gears are lined up on their pilots and set correctly on the inner case, ready to go, all lined up to their uh, indexing marks. The engine is at top dead center and there was a series of marks on the gears uh, to show where everything, all the alignment is. So essentially we just got to um, drop the outer case on top of it and everything hopefully will line back up the way it should and we'll have the, uh, the outer case buttoned up on top of it and all the gear train uh, contained. All right, got the outer case back on and actually went on very nicely. Everything lined up with the gears and uh, was pretty uneventful actually, which was very nice. So it's assembled, uh, gears are all timed correctly. And uh, the next step is uh, we're going to put the PSRU back on and tip this thing back upright. Um, and then some of the miscellaneous outer stuff is yet to put on the oil pump and some of the plugs and, and things of that nature. and. Uh, Got the uh, PSRU put on and the, uh, stood back up upright and everything went together good, so making good progress. Yeah, the motor is already uh, all taped up, ready for some paint, so I'm going to take it off the mount and hang it and then uh, get it prepped and give it a nice paint job. And up on the hoist uh, and uh, ready to paint it, thought this is a good view of the engine off the stand all together, you can kind of see the actual size and and shape and, uh, and package that the engine is. Got it back on the stand and uh, starting to reassemble the uh, exhaust stacks and the rear impeller housing and then I'll come around and work on some of the accessories up front. But it's looking good. Okay the engine's coming along good now. we are uh, got it back on the stand, got the front uh, propeller speed reduction unit back on with the uh, belts on and um, then got the exhaust section all put together and the turbo that we found to put on this guy. Let's see if I can come around, you can see the turbo. So we got that mounted up and a uh, adapter flange belt for it. I need to build the uh, intake plenum back to the uh, intake of the engine. Here we are turning the uh, front cover that's going to blank out where the propeller normally mounts. We realized that without the propeller there, uh, the front bearing is exposed, so we're building a uh, blanking plate for that. Okay, I've moved along a little bit further, coming along, getting it back together. Got the intake all belt from the turbo, you can see that there, zoom in on that guy. Uh, don't have the boots yet to connect from end to end, but uh, that's the aluminum intake all fabricated up. Got the external tank here for the oil all mounted. I uh, need to plumb it yet, but it's, it's there mounted and belt ready to go. Got the magnetos back on and hooked up. And uh, had to replace a couple of spark plugs. And then that uh, front cover blanking plate's all built and mounted. Okay, we got the engine moving forward. We got the controls mounted on there. It's not all plumbed up yet, but we're starting the process. Um, so you can see there on the, the side is the fuel tank, and then in the back in the red is the oil tank. And starting to connect up some lines to it. <clears throat> see down there the fuel pump, uh, primary boost pump, and then the main injection pump and some of the plumbing below uh, that goes back around connects to the oil tank got the uh, instrument panel here built and mounted and you see the turbo back here and the intake tube all built and tucked in there so it's coming together. Essentially it's uh, 
down to a few more wires, a few more hoses, and uh, we're not too far away from giving this thing a good old uh, try. See if she'll fire right up. Okay, here we are. We got the engine all set up. Uh, we haven't cranked it over yet. Um, we don't have the injectors in, and we have um, some vinyl tubing on there. And we're going to try to purge the injection pump and verify operation. Uh, we're also going to verify oil pressure comes alive. Um, so those are the two main things we're, we're trying to do. Oh, and uh, we got an inductive timing light. Make sure the mags are work coming alive, and then we can shut them off with our. Uh, P lead kill switches. So uh, here we go. So you want to run the fuel pump too? Yeah. So we're all connected, all's clear. This is the first time it's a uh, starter engaged uh, turnover. All right, I put the video in fast forward so we could quickly move through this uh, next 20 minutes of testing the engine. Essentially, we were looking to see that uh, the engine was going to operate properly, um, setting the, checking the timing light, make sure the mags were coming alive and we could shut them off with a P-lead kill switch, looking for leaks, uh, looking for fuel to come uh, through the fuel pump, also checking that it was starting to suck oil into the uh, um, oil pump. So. Uh, we were measuring the, the tank there and just just continuing to move through all the different uh, avenues of making sure that uh, the lubricant would flow through the engine correctly. Um, we tilted it up there to make sure that we were getting a supply to the uh, bottom of the oil pump. Um, it was going down but slowly. We hadn't seen pressure yet. Uh, we were also looking to see that the scavenge pump was pushing oil back to our uh, reservoir uh, and that was all working properly. Um, so after that we uh, set the engine back level and uh, made sure that uh, everything was going to work correctly in a level attitude and so we could take it outdoors and uh, set it up and, and go through and test fire it. 